for giving me the opportunity to speak to this intimate group about money. I would speak for about 20 minutes and then I would open the floor for questions if there are any and contributions as well. I have a very interesting question. I don't know if you've ever thought about it. But my question is, why did God design the world in such a way that you and I and most of humanity invest 70 to 80 percent and some of us if not a hundred maybe a 90 percent of our time and energy and earning money what is the divine purpose and intent behind this everyone listening to me here is a believer even if you're an atheist even if you're not religious what do we all believe in we all believe in money now what is money simply put money is a belief system this is a 10 cd bill a 10 cd note that i have in my hand what is this bill worth this piece of paper is worth nothing. It does not even make for a good tissue to blow your nose. It is a piece of paper in which all of us decide to invest the belief that it carries a certain purchase and power. Money is a belief system which everyone believes in, including the atheist down the street including your neighbor who has sworn that he's an atheist. He also believes in this thing called money. The power of money lies in the fact that we, a society, all agree to believe in this particular store of value, this piece of paper. If I suddenly produced a pink piece of paper, which was identical to the 10 CD note and said, I want you to believe in my currency system. I tell you, I'm going to start issuing 10 CD notes on pink paper. People will not believe me. And my currency is going to be worthless, if not fake. Because the belief that is sustained by money is not going to sustain the ones that I printed at home. Money is sustained by a belief. When we get into the world of credit, the world of finance, the origin, the etymology of the word credit come from the Latin credo, which means belief. Because if I lend you money, it's because I believe that you are capable of paying me back. The whole entire financial system is built on belief. There has got to be belief on the part of the lender to the borrower. When we are talking about creation, about anything which is engineered, for it to be sustainable, it has to have structural integrity. I repeat this because it's critical. Where we talk about creation, about anything that is engineered, for it to be sustained, it has to have structural integrity. The idea of integrity is the idea of consistency. What we call from A to Z. The idea that there is a consistency running through the whole structure. The whole structure is consistent. This is the seal of God. This is true. When you look at the word truth in Hebrew, 
and you remove the Aleph, which always is used to represent God because it has the numerical value of one. When you remove the Aleph from the word truth, the word that you have is death. When we remove God from money, when we remove God from wealth, when we re remove God from prosperity, what we have is death. Now, look at what's been happening in the financial markets. If we look at HSBC, we have money laundering. We look at Barclays, manipulation. We look at the collapse of MF Global. We look at Neiman. We look at Enron. Where did things go wrong for these major corporations? Because they did not cleave to the truth. Because there was corruption of their integrity. And when you have integrity removed from the equation, you have death. You have a collapse. You have bankruptcy and you have a recession. When it comes to prosperity, money, wealth, how do we define ourselves as individuals? Some are defined as a high net worth individual, an HNW. Some are defined as a low net worth individual, an LNW. Some are defined as negative net worth individuals, an NNW. <laughs> it's reprehensible and disgusting to define an individual, a human being, his or her worth by what we see, by their bank account, or what their net asset position is. That is the sum total of a human being, their money. But this is the way that we think and we absorb it. Now, I'm going to shock you. I'm going to give you a shock of your life. If I should ask any one of you here, I doubt any one of you speak Hebrew, but if you should run into anybody who speaks Hebrew and you should ask them, how do you say I have in Hebrew? I have in Hebrew. I'm asking this question because you cannot say I have in Hebrew. Somebody who speaks Hebrew will say yeshli. But yeshli does not mean I have. There is no word for have in Hebrew. It doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. The concept of have, for a human being to be able to stand up and say I have, just does not exist in the whole mental space of the Hebrew language. Yeshli means there is to me. That's how you say I have in Hebrew, yeshli. But yeshli literally means there is to me. Do you see the difference between there is to me and I have? There is to me means is being assigned externally to me. There is and is being given to me. So we have to redefine ourselves. I cannot be what I have of my physical prowess or intellectual, intellectual, or intellectual prowess. Ask yourself in your life, what's most important to you? Do you pride yourself in your knowledge and wisdom? Is it about your physical fitness, your beauty? Is it about your wealth? How do you define your success, your importance as a human being? Is it none of the above? What's the benchmark? What's the measuring stick? 
I repeat this because it's important. That's why we're here. Ask yourself in your life, what's the most important to you? Do you pride yourself in your knowledge and wisdom? Is it about your physical fitness, your beauty? Is it about your wealth? How do you define your success, your importance as a human being? Is it none of the above? What's the benchmark? What's the measuring stick? Let us look at God's perspective on this matter. In the book of Jeremiah, chapters 9, there is something fascinating that is stated there that I want to share with you. I'm going to read from verse 22. That says the Lord, let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, nor the strong man boast of his strength, nor the rich man boast of his riches. God is telling you what he does not value. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, nor the strong man boast of his strength, nor the rich man boast of his riches. These are what God does not value. If that's the case, then what does God value? What is his perspective on this? Verses 23. But let him that boast exalt in this, that he understands and knows me, for I am the Lord, who practices kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Now, it's strange. What does it mean to actually understand and know God? If God is measuring his measuring stick or what he is interested in is kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. So we now have a new measuring stick for personal power and success. I'm not defined by my knowledge. I'm not defined based on my intelligence or my intellect. I'm not defined by my body. I'm not defined by my money. I'm defined by what I give. The text says, who practices kindness, justice, and righteousness. Conclusion, I am what I give. I am not what I have. I am what I give. That's how we need to measure ourselves.